The old architecture is frozen, we might have finally solved list and keyboard handling and React Native apps will dominate your home screen soon. Hey what's up, Simon here from galaxies.dev. These and more are things you might have learned at the FJS 2025 in Krakow. If you weren't there or you didn't watch two days of live stream footage, then here's a quick recap of the most important news and trends from the React Native world. First of all, there's a big positivity and optimism in the React Native world. Charlie gave the keynote CEO of Expo and he described what he's currently seeing and how Expo might dominate the future of our apps. So in the past, this was more or less a dream that every app here on the home screen could be built with React Native, but by now, it is actually a possibility and this is just something that vibes through the whole community. Uh, you can build anything and you can build it with high quality because of all the great community packages we have, of all the improvements of React Native, of Expo. And you can also see this trend in the development of all these charts, whether it's React, React Native or Expo installation, all of them are constantly growing on NPM. And this whole decade, I think he called the decade of meh React Native apps, is over. So we started all with like limited functionalities in React Native in the beginning and Expo wasn't great in the beginning, remember all the eject stuff, but now we're at a point in 2025 and beyond. We're at a tipping point. React Native has come to a level where it's good enough and even great for pretty much every kind of application and the community feels this and this is the the, the wind you can feel in the background, the, the optimism in the React Native world and I think he really captured this in a great way and I think in the future every app can be built with React Native. Second, keyboard management has evolved a lot over the last 10 years. Just like previously mentioned that everything got better up until this point, the same is true for keyboard management and Kirill from Magello gave a great talk. This is actually jumping from the keynote straight to the last talk of the FJS, but I wanted to highlight this nonetheless because there are many solutions for keyboard handling out there and all of them have some flaws. They might not work on Android, they might have specific problems with this or that view and Kirill shared a package that Magello or he created that is called React Native Keyboard Controller, which is probably the best thing you can use today to control the keyboard in your React Native app. It covers so many different use cases and it does it also by offering you a great extensibility. There are components uh, that you can use for specific cases. So sometimes you might want to scroll out your app, you don't want to scroll out your app, you want to have a toolbar, uh, you want to have a certain overlay, you want to have uh, your own hook set up that triggers something when uh, your application changes. Really, there is so much you can do with this React Native keyboard controller that this should probably be the solution you use in future applications. And one of the other takeaways was that keyboard is actually just another view that you can control. And with that mindset, hopefully in the future, keyboard management won't be a pain for you any. Just like we finally figured out keyboard control, we might have the right tools for handling lists in a performant way as well. Jay Maestri, creator of Legend List, gave a great talk on the problems of other lists and he really gave a great example of debugging those lists and how certain lists re-render and why this causes confusion and uh, memory problems and he shared what he optimized with legend list and why it is so performant. Give it a try, it might be the best list solution out there right now and it is also once again just like flash list a drop in replacement for your list. Only thing to keep in mind is that besides legend list uh, Flashlist is actually working on a new version as well. So I teased this a couple of weeks ago in the, Re uh, in the Galaxy's newsletter. There's also already the uh, RC4 of version 2. That is a complete rewrite of the initial Flashlist. I think they're by now also using a JS-based uh, solution. Uh, I'm not exactly sure about that, but keep an eye on Flashlist as well. By the way, if you want weekly news and tips like this, you should join galaxies.dev. You can actually become a member for free and get our newsletter or you can upgrade to a pro account to access all my video courses and the huge Zero to Hero mission which will tell you everything you need to know about building your own React Native application and getting it into the store. So 
Check out galaxies.dev. It is my online school. You can join for free. You will get my weekly newsletter or become a pro and join Zero to Hero. Animations can dramatically improve the experience of your React Native application. There were great talks about handling animations and creating animations, especially one from Enzo. Enzo was also guest on my podcast before. He shared everything very detailed about using reanimated, using Spring, using examples for those animations and how you can just make your app better with animations. On the same note, there were also other talks. Uh, for example, this one about WebGPU by Krzysiek Pieskowi. Um, React Native WebGPU worklets are unbelievable, powerful in combination with Skier 3JS. It just, just, you can do pretty much anything. I think he gave a quote, impossible becomes possible. And that's so true for React Native. What you thought isn't really possible like two, three, four years ago, it is just now super available for everyone. And with React Native worklets, we will also have access to just putting anything in the background on these worklets, like Reanimated is already doing this. And for another practical talk, check out Salt's example. I really love Salt's examples he gave on Twitter or X before, where he cloned these applications, had so many great uh, like micro interactions and animations. And again, this just shows Everything is possible with React Native and you can give your app this premium feeling, what he calls it, what you usually see in all these big applications and it is accessible to everyone. So don't sleep on animations. Last year I said that brownfield application is still a very challenging topic. There was a talk from Marius last week, uh, last year, who also came on the podcast to discuss this and the whole process of building a brownfield app was really challenging. Since then, actually a lot has happened. Callstack put a lot of effort into making this easier. If you're following them, you're gonna see many examples how you can integrate React Native in existing native applications. And there was also a talk from Sojin, uh, who presented Granite, the enterprise-grade React Native framework that also makes it easier for brownfield applications to work. And this is, once again, an important piece of this uh, React Native domination plan that Charlie in the keynote gave. So adopting React Native gradually in old applications and legacy applications that use Swift, Objective-C, is part of bringing React Native like to every app on your device. And Brownfield was challenging, but I feel like it gets more attention lately and it gets a lot better. So I'm excited to see where Brownfield will move over the next month and years. And I'm pretty sure that this will help to make the whole migration of legacy applications to React Native a lot easier. If you haven't heard it before, I will just say it again. The biggest companies in the world are using React Native. Especially this year at the AppJS, there were two talks. One was from Michael, who is working on the NFL application. He shared something about the CI and CD migration success story that was pretty cool. But my point is a different one. The NFL apps, big apps, are built with React Native. And so is the Starling application. Aaron was on the AppJS last year. Uh, he presented how he's doing like this whole 3JS calculation of sky objects. That was an impressive talk as well. But this year he also shared some more internal stories of how Expo and React Native helps the team to move a lot faster in what they built at Starling. And my point is that the biggest companies in the world are using Expo. These two are just an example. There are countless other apps and are built by major brands and companies. And if React Native is good enough for those companies, then I'm pretty sure it's good enough for the next CRM or whatever small, medium-sized business you are serving. And you don't need Flutter, you don't need anything strange. React Native offers you everything and more than you need to build perfectly fine consumer applications in 2025 and beyond. AI has arrived. And if you still decline this or ignore this fact, then you're leaving a lot on the table. In the AppJS, there were countless talks that either directly referenced AI or were built on AI stuff. One talk was about running small language models with this package called Executorge by Mateusz. Uh, I've highlighted this before in, in my newsletter. It's really a cool package and you can use it in your React Native application to get really astonishing results locally without any network connection. On top of that, Raphael gave a great talk about the evolution of coding with AI. So he shared some really practical steps in how you can use AI, I think he especially used cursor in his example, in your project. 
not just like for a small bug, but in general, how to come up with a plan, outline tasks, and then go through these tasks one by one or give specific information on how you want to fix something. This is meant for companies that want to adopt AI in their process. And as well, there was actually also Tomek from Bold who shared how you can kind of wipe code with Bold, but also the difference between wipe coding and professional coding and why there is actually a place for wipe coding even in professional coding and how it can just make your um, app better. Beyond these direct talks, there were many more. There was Thor from Eleven Labs. Um, who gave a great presentation, I think prior to this at a meeting. There was Delphine from Mistral. Um, she talked about streaming, which wasn't exactly related to AI, but is certainly very important related to AI. Um, then we also had Charlie finally, uh, who in the beginning said that pretty much anyone in the world can build an app with React Native using these AI tools. If you have a certain taste and uh, some patience, you can build an app with Expo. And the LLMs are great with React and React Native code, making this a perfect choice. And you see this for Bold, V0, all these other tools, everyone is adopting React Native. So please stop sleeping on AI, use some kind of integration, get used to it, invest some time into learning it, it won't go away. The probably biggest news from the AppJS is that the legacy architecture, the old architecture is now frozen. There was a great talk and you probably everyone should watch this talk by Ricardo and Nicola from the React and React Native team about the legacy architecture and how they plan to adopt this. Um, so what does freezing mean? Well, it means pretty much they will stop working on the legacy architecture. On top of that, they will also stop accepting PRs against the legacy architecture. Why is that the case? Well, it's pretty easy to explain. If we want to, or if they want to um, manage two architectures the whole time, that's a lot of effort for every release. You're gonna make sure that legacy works, test works, everything works and they just want to cut this off. They want to invest more time and more power in the future, which is the new architecture, which should probably just be called the architecture at some point, and they will stop putting resources into keeping up the old architecture. That also means, and we'd break us to this awesome <laughs> slide, what's the future of the legacy arc? It has to go, let it go, please just let it go. I know this isn't easy for many companies. In my own apps, I tried this sometimes, I sometimes failed by updating to the new architecture and then some packages didn't work or some internals didn't work, but it is definitely worth investing the time into the new architecture and migrating your app. This is the future. You don't want to stay on the legacy architecture for one, two, three more years. You won't get any critical updates. Things and new packages won't work with your old architecture. So please make sure that your app is getting ready for the new architecture. So, because this will eventually die. On top of that, there was also another great talk from Alex Hunt about uh, towards a stable JavaScript API where he shared what React Native releases over the next time will look like. They want to stabilize the internal API so you can't make any deep imports from the React Native um, code anymore. There should be a clear snapshot of the API for the user. So in the future, you can just compare against this. There will be better TypeScript support. Uh, all of this is coming over the next time. So you see this timeline until late 2025, where they will also remove the old types. Again, bit technical talk here, but really recommend for everyone who's interested in the future of React Native to um, check this out, uh, as they will um, pretty much give you all the information you need to build powerful, stable and secure applications that actually have a future so you don't have to update, migrate anything uh, after you're writing this right now in 2025. Native features are critical for your React Native application. It's not just about building a cross-platform application that looks like a website anymore. It is about building these deep native integrations. There were great talks, especially the one from Alex. Uh, Alex works at Partyful. You might have heard this. This application actually won an award on the Google Play Store, I think last year. Partyful is like a party invitation application. So I'm not at parties, so I don't have to use it. But anyway, looks really great and he shared how they used app clips. So app clips are a really interesting feature and you can easily add this to your React Native application. 
they kind of allow your um, app to send out, for example, links. In, it, in this case, it was a link to an invitation. And then users can go into this and kind of use a demo version of the app. So have you like a super light view of the application that instantly opens without actually downloading a bundle from the App Store. And this can dramatically increase the conversion of your application because previously users wasn't, weren't sure, why should I download this application? But with AppClips, you're already you're using this, you see this, and then you may Maybe click like a functionality add to calendar or something and then you get a prompt oh please install the full application so you get more and the results were astonishing they had so much growth on ios new users downloads ios app downloads increase that it's definitely worth keeping an eye on this native functionality and also keith from the expo team gave another talk on native code and capabilities in your uh, react native application he showcased expo ui expo modules the latest sdks there's so much possible now with native code, of course, native files as you could use before, like .iOS, .android or .web. And you should really embrace these differences of the platform and dive into the native functionality because this, among other things like performance and animations, are things that your users really want to see in a great application. The last point is actually my own conclusion of the app.js and the talks and that is that nothing is impossible everything that was problematic in the uh, past like debugging lists keyboard handling animations performance all of these pains are being solved right now by the community or are already at a perfectly fine place so i just want to reiterate on this react native is at an inflection point it can really break out from here it has everything all the ingredients all the last 10 years have built up to this moment so that we now have a really great React Native version. We have a great community. We have a great ecosystem of plugins that allows us to build everything. Nothing is impossible anymore. And even if the job market right now isn't looking that great, this is, I think, due to other reasons. It's not because React Native isn't great or uh, the programming will go away. Everything is a bit turmoil right now because of AI and the impact and in general the job market. but this will settle down. So maybe it's actually already happening right now because of the integration of Expo and React Native and all these AI tools where all Vibe coders in the world will come together and use React Native. Eventually, they will need you because they're gonna hit a critical wall in their applications when they build out something. So they need a real developer with real React Native skills. Or if you're a Vibe coder, then probably you wanna dive deeper a bit more into React Native and what it means and how you can ship amazing apps. Just don't use the legacy architecture anymore and you'll probably be fine. So how do you feel about React Native right now? Are you still battling with some nasty issues right now or do you feel this positive vibe in the community as well? Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm definitely on fire and looking forward to build more epic apps together with you in the future. And if you want some help and guidance, check out my courses on galaxies.dev, especially the Zero to Hero mission, which will help you to build your own React Native app so you can join the hype and ship your apps in no time. Stay subscribed and I'll catch you in the next one and until then happy coding. Sigh.